So next we're going to talk about transcendentalism, which is a unit that occurs within Romanticism. So Romanticism kind of serves as the umbrella term, and this, as you can see from the dates, happens within it, because Romanticism's 1800s to 1860s, this is 1830s to 1860s, so it's within it, but it's more specific, it impacts a specific group of authors, and it's just a little bit different. Um, but it's an American literary and philosophical movement, but it's not a religion. So transcendentalism that's a giant word that's a fun word to use on people who wouldn't know what it means but what does it mean well to transcend is a verb and it means to go beyond a limit or range for example of thought or belief so transcendentalism at its core is about moving beyond the common experience and understanding so it's the idea that in determining the ultimate reality of God the universe, the self, and other important matters, one must transcend or go beyond the everyday human experience in the physical world. And really what that's saying is go within, find out what's inside of you that can help you discover these truths. Um, it is also based on romantic ideas, uh, it's based on intuition, and it's very optimistic. You have to be optimistic in order to think as a transcendentalist because they are so open and free and they have these ideas of limitless possibilities of the future and you have to be an optimist to see that. So what are some of the premises of transcendentalism? Well, they believe there's a direct connection between the universe and the individual soul, that we're all connected in that way. Um, they believe that by thinking about objects in nature, that people can transcend the world and discover a union with the oversoul. Um, we all kind of share this one soul, and it starts to sound a little bit like hippie-like, a little granola here, but the idea is that everyone shares this soul together, and we're all people this human experience. Um, follow your intuition and beliefs no matter how much they differ from the social norms. So often we feel, I believe, like fish in schools just kind of going place to place because we're supposed to. And maybe you might say, I don't want to go that way. I don't feel like I need to go that way. My gut is telling me to go the other way. And society basically says, well, keep swimming. And we say, all right. They're saying, no, Take a different turn and go whichever way your, your heart is telling you to go. That that's important and it's something worth listening to. And I love this last one because it's just so pure and non-cynical and non-jaded. But they believe that all people are inherently good. That within all of us there's someone good and that we're good people. Deep down when it comes down to it we'll make good choices. So who are a few of the transcendentalists? You have Ralph Waldo Emerson. He's kind of like the father of it. Um, he's a former Unitarian minister from Massachusetts who became the most well-known transcendentalist. And then you have Henry David Thoreau, who was his student. And he was the son of a pencil maker. And he dropped out of society to live a solitary and transcendental life. He basically was like, uh, yeah, I'm done with society. Um, and he, interestingly enough, decided, um, I don't like the money the way my taxes are being spent, so I'm just going to stop giving you taxes. This got him in trouble for tax evasion, but one of the big things he was against was slavery. He was an abolitionist. So for him, spending tax money to go toward a government that supported slavery felt wrong to him, so he just stopped paying it. Um, interestingly enough, him and Emerson had land that kind of backed up to each other, and so they would kind of meet on their boundaries and walk together in nature and just talk and maybe not even talk and just get back to nature together. And then you have Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman is so tricky. He just doesn't fit anywhere because he's so unique. He doesn't have um, necessarily one style to him. He's extremely multifaceted. So basically imagine him standing in the middle of Romanticism, Transcendentalism, which is all of course under the umbrella of Romanticism. And imagine his beard, his giant, giant beard has split in half and half goes toward transcendentalism and half goes towards romanticism and he just serves as the bridge the beard bridge if you will um, he's a very important writer uh, probably one of the most important poets in america and he does show an extreme reverence for nature and his work um, is definitely inspirational and focuses on the individual so we'll place him here for now but understand that he has many facets to him so here they are in all their bearded glory Walt Whitman kind of looks like a hobo drifter there, but that's okay. He is really a brilliant dude. Um, and they were just very much about getting back to nature. Cool guys.
So why did transcendentalism become popular? Well, with Romanticism, the Americans felt like there must be more to life than this logical, rational experience. So the Age of Reason was great, and logic is great, and thinking things through is great. But is that it? Is that it? There has to be more. Why have these emotions? Why have imagination if you're not going to do anything with it? And the transcendentalists believe that's where you needed to start tapping into those inner feelings. And they sought to regain a spirituality that they thought was missing from the current thought and philosophy. So getting back to, again, those basics of nature. So these questions aren't required for you to answer officially. We're just going to be talking about them, but looking at them gives you a feeling about what transcendentalism involves. So um, how are you affected by nature? Do you find comfort in it? Some people find going out into nature is good for them. Um, do you reflect the moods of nature? I really feel like on rainy days, I struggle to be as optimistic as I am on nice days. Um, even though I spend the whole day inside at work, I still feel like it's dreary out. So my soul kind of matches it sometimes. What is the role of nature in your life? Uh, how does nature play a role? Are you, are you a hunter or a fisher? Do you like to be outside? Or are you like, mm, I'd rather stay inside forever? Uh, what is meant by an individual spiritual side? And how would you define that? Uh, what is the connection between the individual spirit and nature? What does it mean to know something intuitively, to have that gut feeling and to just know? To get a phone call and know something's wrong or to just get a sense that something's not right or that something's good or something good is going to happen. Um, what does that mean? And then how do you demonstrate that you are an individual? Do you think independently of others or do you follow the crowd? Or if you don't follow the crowd, do you have a crowd of people that also don't follow the crowd? So then are you really thinking independently or are you just a group of people that go against the social norms but together? This is a tough question for high school kids to answer um, just because you're in such a difficult part of your life um, in regards to thinking independently and not following the crowd. But these are the things we're going to look at as we talk about transcendentalism in American literature.